welcome back to my channel. I'm Kelly. I am not going on camera today because I'm going to be attempting to do some ice dyeing of, and for this instance, I'm just going to use some 14 count Ada. I have a couple of colors of liquid writ dye, which I'll go into in a little bit. And then I bought some Dylon China Blue powdered dye. And I bought some Petal Pink Powdered Rit and some Golden Yellow Amarillo, well, I guess that's just the Spanish Amarillo Dorado um, Rit dye. Uh, let's see. I was at AC Moore the other day and I picked up these uh, 12 by 14 white 14 count Adas. I got four packages because AC Moore had them for a dollar a piece and I thought for one dollar it was perfect I really don't have a plan right now this is just a uh, it's just a fun experiment for me because I don't know how any of this will work now you, you notice the ice cube tray over here and what's in this ice cube tray is not frozen even though it's been in the freezer for a couple of days I used a salt water solution and I put a few drops of the hyacinth color and a few drops of the apple green color. And what I did was I put the salt water in each of the cube areas and then I put the drops of the color uh, in each cube. I didn't mix them together. And so I have hyacinth on one side and the green apple on the other. And I have some of these plastic pipettes that I will use to drip the color onto the cloth when I get it ready. And then I have just the usual. I have some quart size Ziploc bags to put the fabric in. I have a Ziploc bag that's full of ice cubes. I have a couple of these little baking trays that I will put over the pan with the fabric. Um, with the ice on it. I haven't decided if I'm going to use that one because it doesn't really fit if I'm going to use this one and do it over like that. Anyway, step one is the fabric should be wet. So, probably should have opened one of these before I came out here. There we go. So this is just your normal run-of-the-mill MCG Textiles Ada, which means it's here at Crackle, it's all stiff. And the first step in the ice dyeing process is that the fabric should be wet. Because by making the fabric wet, the ice should stick to it. I'm not sure if the weather is perfect for that or not. I know that the humidity seems to have broken for now. The sun just came back out. It was a pretty gray morning. We had a good storm last night, but it's nice and cool out here today. Um, one of my dogs is out here enjoying the sun with me. I put the others back in the house because I was going to have them out here, but then I realized I would probably have a circus. So anyway, it's nice and wet. Well, it's not really wet, but it's damp. I'm hoping the ice will stick to it. And then what you do is you have your pan to catch your runoff from your ice cubes. And you kind of crinkle up your fabric and you lay it. I think I'm going to do two at once. I think I have enough room because these aren't very big pieces of Ada. Pardon the background noise because it's Friday here and pretty busy out on the highway. My road isn't busy. Um, but you can hear all the traffic out on the highway. Okay, I think that's wet enough. Just Bunch that up and just lay it here. I imagine that you could do this, you know, by putting rubber bands and doing a real tie-dye application. 
But in this instance, I'm just going to, well, the first thing I'm do, gonna do is I'm gonna try putting a little bit of ice on the fabric. And of course, it's not gonna stick. But we'll just lay it on here. Kind of hope for the best. Is that's really going to be for... Well, first I'm going to do... I'm sorry. A little bit confused. I didn't bring any paper towels out, so... I may have to stop and go get some. I do have some plastic gloves here, and I may put one on just for the sake of if I go to catch something, I won't have that die all over my hands. My hands are small, so you can see these, even though the package says these are small, these are food service gloves, but good enough for here. Let's see, this color is the hyacinth, I think. So here I'm just going to hold it up and some drips. It's pretty. And I did bring a spray bottle out so that I can finish my thought, spray more water on it. Now I don't know how this would work because this is an ice you know, melting into the fabric, which would soak down. So that's why I brought the misting bottle, so that I can add a little more water to the fabric and maybe push the dye down in the layers. So what I might do is take that ice off for now and turn this fabric over. There I go. Unprotected hand. I was hoping that this dye would freeze and then I had colored ice cubes to use and I think if I hadn't tried putting the salt in the water beforehand it would have frozen. It was just me being me, you know, not really thinking science that salt water doesn't freeze um, and trying it that way. So that was hyacinth, and now what I want to do, hmm. well, I think I'm gonna, I'll be right back, because I've got to cut this open. I want to try the hyacinth blue on top of that. So I've got to cut this open and get a, a knife or a spoon or something to pull this out Okay, with. and I'm back, and I cut the corner off. And again, this is the china blue, which I'm hoping is a really pretty blue color light blue. But here I'm going to put some ice on the fabric. It seems to be sticking better now that I've put other dye on it and sprayed it some. I'm not really sure how much you're supposed to use. I'm going to layer this right up there though. So oh, I'm going to put a little back there. Let's see if I can get it to... Hmm. I'm not sure how people get ice to stick. It's not sticking really well for me. I'm going to put some there. And then what I'm going to do is I have a plastic knife here just so I can pull it out and shake it. And I'm going to shake a little bit here. And a little bit there. Probably gotten a little bit on the fabric next to it, but I really don't care. And you notice it says permanent, so I'm hoping that it won't have any issues when you wash it. That's also going to be part of my test. Like if when I stitch something on here, after I finish, I want to be able to, you know, give it a little bit of a wash. OK, 
Okay. And I'll set that over there. Pardon my reach. I'm going to grab my bottle of water. And I am going to just spray it a little bit. And I guess we will see what we will see. And there is a little bit of blue on this fabric too, but that's okay. More the merrier. I seem to say that a lot. Okay, and just try to get most of the blue out of here for the hyacinth color. And I hope it really is a true hyacinth because I love the color hyacinth. And I'm just going to go in here and pick up a little bit of the apple green. And then I will drip some apple green. Not looking like I really want much of this apple green because it looks kind of black. Which isn't a terrible thing. But I don't know that I want that much green or that dark of green. Is really what I'm thinking about. I'm going to put a little bit of pink in here with the Brit dye, and I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow with the green. Open my boxes. Well, I'm only going to do one at a time. I'm going to put some more ice on this green side. Oops. Let's get in there. And ice and lay it in here. Well, that didn't work. I think I have it bunched up a little too tight. I probably should have opened it up some, but oh well. We'll see what happens. Oh, I'm getting... I think I like that blue dye package better because RIT comes in this like jello paper and if you get a package wet I imagine it seeps right in. Not a good thing for me to me. So I'm gonna add some pink. And I imagine what you could do is you could dye this with one color first and then go back and over dye it, which I think sounds like a lot of fun. And I will probably do uh, one of my other practice pieces. So that's the Petal Pink Rit dye. <clears throat> and now I'm going to do some of the golden yellow. Now, yellow is not my best friend, favorite color, so I won't use a whole lot of this, I don't think. But never say never. And I'm just going to tap that off a little. So this, of course, means that I may get a little of this overflow onto the other Also, but it's an experiment. So I'm going to let this sit and let the ice melt. I might put a little bit more spray on that fabric too, on top of the dye, the powdered dye, just to help move it all around. I may have to add more pink because, as usual, I got carried away with the yellow. But we'll see after all of this goes through. And I do have some rainbow spots on the blue. Let me see if I can pick this up. 
and bring it around a little bit to show you. Hang on. So here's a close-up look. And oops, sorry if it jerks a little bit. So you can see all of the speckles and if you look over on the blue you can see a little bit of speckling going on over there too and I like the way the top looks but you can see down underneath that it's still pretty white so I don't know if as the water as the ice melts and the water comes up if this is all going to turn brown <laughs> I guess we're going to find out but and I might actually come up with a colander or something that'll set this up higher for next for the next times I do this just to uh, see how that goes and I'm trying to put my tripod back so anyway that is the beginning of my ice dyeing experiment I'm gonna add a little bit more water in a few spots maybe some more ice on top of it I imagine that this is only as good as the melting of the ice. As you see, I'm using the wrong hand. I'm not even left-handed. I'm just, just me. that there. I'm going to pick one up and set it up. Knocked off the one that was there. Set that down in there. And then I'll add one here. It's funny how when motorcycles go by you can hear people talking on their headsets. I don't have a refrigerator ice maker I have a countertop one so it kind of makes ice cubes like popsicles where there's metal prongs and the ice just keeps bathing itself in water to make the ice cubes which is where the prongs keep bathing themselves in water to make the ice cubes okay so that's it I will be back when this gets a little bit further thanks for joining me be right back Well, it's been an hour or so. You can see most of the, or all of the ice is melted here. And there's still a few little pieces there. So I'm going to let this sit a little bit longer. I've also put like some lace trim in the bottom of this one. And in the blue I've added um, some other trim and a piece of white muslin type cotton. Just, you know, if I'm doing it, I might as well see how, what other kind of stuff I can do. But it's looking a little dark. I'm thinking maybe when I rinse it, it will lighten up, I hope. Because I was really going for more of a lighter mottled look. But hey, it's not bad for an experiment. So I will be back. I'm going to let this sit a little bit longer. I want the, all the ice to melt on the blue piece. And there's not much left. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit so you can see what's left there just a few little pieces okay wrong way see wrong way I will be back hi well I've taken the fabric in the house and I used some salt and cold water and I rinsed it all out and I've squeezed out some of the water and I thought I would just bring it back out and show it but it's really sunny out here, and I can't really tell. I tried moving this into the shade, but I still can't really tell what the sun is doing to it. So let me move 
those out of the way. And this is one piece. This is the blue, china blue and hyacinth color. And you can see where some of the fallout from the other fabric got onto it. But all in all, it's not too bad. This, this side is a little spottier than the other side. And I think I'm going to throw these in the wash machine and wash and dry them and see what happens. And I think I'm going to do them together. They have been rinsed. Now let me excuse my rent, my reach. These were the trim. That's the white kind of embroidered trim that I put in the plate bottom of the plate. I think I had it. No, it's the fabric. This is a piece of white cotton. And all I did was fold this and then tie it. And that's kind of pretty. Whoops, I'm not in the viewfinder. So that's not too bad. But I'm going to wash and, and dry all of it and see what happens. I mean, it could all just wash back out. I don't know. But I thought that was kind of pretty too. And then, excuse my reach again, I'll pull the orange in which it looks orange now instead of what golden yellow and petal pink. So that's the trim that I had down on the bottom on the plate catching all the drips. And then this came out really pretty. This would be a pretty fall um, one I think. But you can still see the the pink and the yellow it did merge out to orange some. And you can see that the green in its raw state, well, that's some of the blue, but the green is rather gray, black, gray colored. But that's okay because the pink and the yellow turned very vibrant. And I think this piece needs to be rinsed a little more before I put it in the washer. But anyway, after this is done, I will come back and show you what it looks like. There we go. Hi. Well, this is the next day. I did a zigzag stitch around the edge of the uh, Ada cloth. And this is the result. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I really like the way this came out. It came out a little dark. But, I mean, I'm looking at this almost like a raw shack. And down in here, I can see a beautiful flower, like roses, and then leaves. And it actually looks like a beautiful bouquet of um, flowers all around. So I really like the way it came out. I don't know what I would cross stitch on it. It's a little darker than I wanted it to be. So I need to do some practicing to see if I can like, even it out a little bit. So this is 14 count white Ada to start with. And this was Rit dye and it was, I um, can't think of the other one. The China blue was a different dye type, but they were powdered dyes. Uh, the green was apple green and that the blue that got on to this fabric from the other piece that I was dyeing is also a liquid hyacinth. So yeah, I think that came out kind of pretty. And this is the piece of trim that I had in the pan underneath the fabric as it, the ice was melting. So as the water pooled, um, this piece picked that up. Now I should say that I washed these in cold water in my washing machine no soap or anything. I just wash them in cold water and then I put them in the dryer to dry and that was all I did. So let me pull in the other piece of Ada and this is the hyacinth blue and china blue piece and it's coming out a little grayer than it, well actually a lot grayer than it is in real life. Um, just snipping off a few fraying edges. I did zigzag around 
all four sides of this fabric also. And this is where some of the dye from the adjoining piece got on this. But hyacinth is kind of like a purple color. And then the china blue is a really pretty light blue. And that's the other side. So you can see a lot of um, that yellow got in here. And you can see where the purple kind of concentrated. But I like this piece too. And I could see, I guess, like Clouds Factory type or um, those type of charts being cross-stitched on these fabrics. Kind of pretty. And then this is the muslin piece, which really came out pretty. Very purpley. Not quite as purple on the screen as it is in life. A little black mark from my dryer. I have an old dryer. Likes to try to eat things. Anyway, so that's just a piece of white muslin. And then this is the piece of trim that I had. Now the muslin I had, I think this muslin was folded in half and then I kind of rolled it up and then I tied it. And it was just sitting in the bottom of the pan while the um, ice melted and everything dripped off. And this piece I think I just had folded in like, like that and that was sitting in the bottom tray also. But it looks pretty consistent. Like I said, now I need to, I'm not sure where that little piece of pink came from, but um, and likewise, these were washed in the same cold water because I threw it all into my machine at the same time. And so I think it came out really pretty. I, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. <clears throat> but that's the blue. And at the same time, I did the... Do this so you can see the blue on this piece too. I did this. And then that trim. So I had a good time with ice dyeing. I have a couple more ideas that I want to try. Um, I want to try to lighten this up quite a bit and make it um, more of a background fabric than an in-your-face fabric. And I think I'm going to attempt that with the spray bottles. And I'm going to put ice on it and start with wet fabric. Maybe not scrunch it up as much. And see what happens. So, after I try that, I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Uh, but for now, this is my ice dyeing attempt from yesterday. So this is kind of attempt two with fabric dyeing, but I'm really liking it. I just have to lighten it up. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a very colorful and stitchy day. And I really appreciate everyone coming back and watching and the new subscribers. So thank you very much. Bye.